I think we're going to get started here and um, hopefully we'll get Gary on to our call. Um, I just want to welcome you to our webinar today. Um, we're back for another SOCAS webinar and we are excited to get started on today's session called Radio Everywhere, How to Build a Strong Mobile App. We have some amazing panelists joining us today and I can't wait to introduce you to them momentarily. I'm Ceres Allison. I am the Senior Senior account executive at SOCAST and I will be your host today. For those of you joining us for the first time during our webinar, uh, we normally invite a panel of experts to get their insights and feedback and we've had a ton of app submissions this year which is pretty incredible. So a big thank you to all of you that have submitted your apps for us to review. Um, sadly we only have enough time to review three of those apps today. For any apps that we couldn't get to today, we'll follow up with a review from our experts at SOCAST if you're interested. If you have any questions during the session, and feel free to submit them in the sidebar. We have my colleague Shay who will be monitoring those for us. If we don't get to those questions, don't worry. We'll definitely get back to you in no time. As always, we welcome all questions and feedback. Also, feel free to connect with us on Twitter at SoCast Digital or use the hashtag digital dollars. So a little bit about SOCAST, I'd like to kick things off with a word from our sponsor uh, here at SOCAST, built with radio in mind. SOCAST's mission is to make digital growth easy for broadcasters. In the past 10 years, we've worked to innovate our solutions to help broadcast partners succeed. SOCAST is truly a one-stop shop for all your digital needs. Through a single dashboard, radio stations can build, manage their websites, mobile apps, social media, and Alexa smart skills. Also, we've introduced a new revenue generating extension platform called SoCast Reach that can help our partners drive significant revenue dollars. If you'd like more information, you are welcome to send me an email, sari, S-A-R-I, at SoCastDigital.com, or you can contact Shay, my colleague, who is monitoring the sidebar for more details on how to contact us. So today we're going to take a look at some apps um, and have our experts review them. The parameters that we're going to work around today are what makes a strong radio app. So building that strong brand recognition within mobile, driving your listener engagement, and generating those digital dollars in revenue. So our experts today are Gary Berkowitz, a well-known radio consultant, programming stations, an industry professional with years of knowledge and experience on many well-known call letters across the country. Um, I value his opinion, a fabulous broadcast industry veteran. So Gary, we welcome you today. And then we have my friend Randy Papool, now a twice named most influential women in radio by Radio Inc. I love that one, but a very well respected woman in the broadcast industry. Um, we met when she worked at Alpha Radio, Alpha Media in VP of marketing position. So I knew her from there. Then again, as the chief marketing officer um, at Aptivata, now with her own agency for her marketing and PR. Um, I'm really excited to have her here. She's got some great thoughts and great marketing to, to, to lend to us today. So welcome, Randy. Thank you for having us. And uh, then, of course, it's me. <laughs> so um, I come from radio. I have almost a 30-year background in programming, being on the air. Um, and then I ended up getting into digital. So getting into digital media through radio, through newspaper, um, ended up in mobile for a little bit and, and loved mobile, loved mobile apps. So um, I'm super excited to talk about that today. And then um, have recently joined SoCast. So. First of all, let's get started with our first app. This is Radio Polynesia Submitted. Um, so we had these apps submitted and we have some thoughts in the way that things can be you know, displayed, the way that things can be um, pulled into the app content wise. So as we took a look at this one, um, the player was very important. So Randy, will you give your opinion on, on what this player looks like to you and how we could enhance it? 
Yes, absolutely. And good afternoon, early or late afternoon, depending on where you're at. Thank you, Sari, for having me. And um, yeah, so what I really like about this app, just first glance with it, is that it is very similar to a lot of the very popular Someone might not have their phone on mute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's typing. <laughs> typing ferocious. No, that's very, 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 you guys. What's that? What? Okay. That's so that's just Gary. He's on now. So got it. Perfect. Okay. Well, so at first glance, what I really like is that this does look similar to a lot of the popular players out there. And and the thing that you're going to hear a lot from me today that I will repeat is that I like these to be fairly not a low barrier of entry and um low barrier of entry. Do you guys hear that? Is that me? Okay. No, I think there was a phone that needed to be on mute. So now I can hear you more clearly. Can you start again? I'm, I apologize. No problem at all. So as, as I was saying, um, one of the things that you'll hear me repeat is I, I like simplicity in the apps um, because you want to make sure that there's a low barrier of entry for your audience uh, when, when they're coming to this app and when they're having to navigate it. Uh, I was I was giving an example the other day to someone that, you know, when I get online and do online shopping, if there are too many steps, I will abandon that cart and never return. So you want to make it very simple. And I do like that on first glance of this. Uh, it's very simple, easy to understand The the player is right there. And um, I think it looks really good. And I think it looks very similar to a lot of the other popular players out there like the Spotify and the Pandora, which I like because as you know, I mean, we can't bury our head in the sand. We know that our audience, they're also on those players as well. So I like that it's very similar to that. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, yeah, great ideas. Um, and what about you, Gary? Can you give your opinion on this? I don't think that we hear him. Okay, so I'll mention a couple other things that we had talked about. Um, being a hit music station, what about like the colors? How are people drawn to colors in a mobile app? Randy, do you have an opinion about that? You know, I think I, I, I do like the way this one looks. Um, it's, it's really up to the format. I think you want to make sure that your branding is uh, streamlined across your website, your station logo and brand, and your app. I think it should all look very similar. So again, that people have that ease of use when they, when they go to um, you know play the songs on your app. So I, I do like this coloring. Um, I think that it you know it fits within the logo. The one thing about the logo on here is that it to me it doesn't stand out as much as it possibly could. So perhaps because the the colors in the logo, I think there's a blue. I would probably lighten up the the background a little bit just so I hate the term make it pop, but that the, so that the logo can can stand out more on there and make the logo pop a little bit. I, I can't stand that. I mean, but but you hear that a lot in graphic design, right? Um, right. But I do think that you could you could play with those colors a little bit to to make that that logo stand out more. No, absolutely. Um, you know, speaking of colors and how things are perceived from a listener, it's very important that everything works. So you know, we took a look at this app, and when we clicked into what is being called a podcast, um, there wasn't anything that was generating from that RSS feed. So um, maybe talk a little bit about how a podcast page should, should be set up in a mobile app. Gary, do we have you here yet? I don't know, do we? I, yes, I, we I, do. Oh my God, really? Holy yes. Mackerel. Can I hear you? Yeah, I hear you fine now, finally. Okay, perfect. So um, as we got started, um, we are on this podcast page now. So I'd love to hear um, what your thoughts as far as you know what this app looks like. We covered the front page. Now we're getting into some of the content. Yeah, you know, on, on this on this one, um, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm not sure I love the uh, that that tagline Samoa's number one hit music station uh, all that much. Uh, but there seems to be like a lot of a lot of empty space on here uh, on this page, blank space. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I guess um, this is a subjective thing. Um, 
you know, but the, the coloring on it, I don't know, it's, to me, it's dark and drab. And, um, you know, when I see Samoa's number one hit music station, uh, I immediately think fun, upbeat, good times. And the colors of this act to me just look a little drab, uh, 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 with no offense to the um, to the designer. <laughs> no, no, we you know that's why we're we're taking a look at them, just making some suggestions. Um, yeah. Randy, what about you? Do you have thoughts on how this could be? You know, I do done over. When, yes, again, going back to how people consume their podcasts now and what they're used to seeing, I would use the podcast artwork if you have one. Um, and, and again, as Gary said. This is, there's a lot of empty space here. So if it is the Vodafone Breakfast podcast, I believe on there, then I would make that full artwork, the one thing that's on there. And, and again, very similar to the way people are consuming their podcasts outside of here, that look and feel so that it's it's similar and um, they're, they're used to the way to, to, to operate that. So yeah, I would do that. I would definitely, less words are always better as i like to say nobody likes to read anymore so pictures do the trick you could have one big picture book that's what you want <laughs> and speaking of that this is another page so this is something to gather data from your listener how much data do you want to gather from your listener and what's that experience like so if this is the first page that you're opening up a mobile app gary what do you think of this uh, i'm a little overwhelmed on, on this page because it's like, wait a minute, what do they want? My social security number too? I mean, um, yeah, it, it's, I don't know. It's, 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 you know, I guess from I, where I come from is that I see an, a mobile app as, as being the way that people can listen to your radio station. And this app seems it's so there's so much on there it's overwhelming to me a little bit if i had it my way i would just have open up the app listen live and that's it i mean i you know radio i think has to understand that the that the listeners are not connecting all the dots yet with these apps they don't necessarily understand that they can listen to local radio stations through the app they don't get it you know, we're, we're, look, we're radio people. We love all the bells and whistles. We love all the high tech. We love all the clicks and, oh my God, if you can tell them what color hair you have and they'll only send you hair color information for Clairol or something. I don't know. But, you know, uh, but th to get to your question, I think that, I, I think that th this app is, is, is overwhelming a little bit and there's an awful lot of information on this page. Um, and even the, the, t the type on it, I don't know. It just looks, it just looks like a, like, it kind of looks like you bought a kit, like 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 uh, you bought a, a kit that says make an app, you know. <laughs> okay, that's a thought exactly. Okay, good. Let's move on to our next one though. So that's one. Now we're gonna we have a couple to cover. Um, so let's get into 105.9 Kiss. So really, we focused on you know the menu bar. Oh menu and the player um looking at you know colors how things open up um randy what do you think about this app and how that um hamburger menu is displayed the hamburger well first of all with with the colors it it is too dark it's too dark um i i love that there's that 3d kind of um light in the in the circle of the kids fm but i would almost i would utilize i would leverage that for some sort of background lighting for the app in here, it's a little too dark. But as far as the hamburger menu, you know, to Gary's point, I don't think we need all of this information on our apps. We're getting them there to listen. And then from there we can incentivize them, but we, I, I don't think we need all of this, you know, um, are, are they coming to this Kiss, S, Kiss FM app for their news, for their sports, are they? You know, so I think you could pull some of those off. I think you could prioritize the ones that you really, the actions you really want people to take, three or four, you're good. Because again, you're trying to get them there to listen right now. That's that's the priority. Yeah, so. and I, I and I would agree with that. And you know, I'll take it one step further. Even um, if the program director of of, of 105.9 Kiss FM uh, went to his general manager and said, "I want to do news and sports on the station," you know, the, the general manager would throw him out of his office. They, Are you crazy? You know, so why is it here? I mean, I think it all comes back to and, and Randy, you said it. And, um, I don't mean to be repetitive, is that we just want them to listen to our our, our brand, our radio station. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. But we want to also bring those listeners to your mobile app for content. But how is that content displayed? So we we took a look at this and, and we did make some comments about, you know, how we could enhance this. Um, Gary, what are your thoughts on how we could enhance this page for a news and uh, blog content? Well, I think if I were if I worked at Inside Edition, I'd be thank, sending them a thank you letter right away. And I would thank them for all the free press that they're giving giving me. Um, I don't know. This page to me, I'd, I'd delete it. Okay. Randy, thoughts on this one? Yeah, it, it, um, I see what they're trying to do, bring in, in some, some content, but it looks like, um, homework to me. It looks, I, I, it, it's a lot of reading. It's the same image over and over again. What I would try to do, um, you know, these could be interesting articles. I'm looking at it. You know, I probably want to read the Aaron Carter thing, but I would bring, you know, Sarah, I, I know you have more experience in this, but I would somehow figure out how to bring the images of the actual article in here. So they look different, more entertaining, catch my eye right now. It just, it looks like the same article over and over again. Right. I think that they could actually enhance this by having, in, you know, the in the metadata in the feed, actually showing an image here and maybe even explaining a little bit, having a little bit more of what that description is in, you know, that page. So this is our third app. This is KJIL. Um, taking a look at the home page. So, you know, we always think we're driving our listeners to the mobile app. We want the mobile app to be a part of their life. Um, it is a way that, you know, a lot of listeners were driven that way during COVID um, because people weren't even driving in their cars. So um, taking a look at this main page, if you were to open up this app, Randy, would you see the player button? No, I wouldn't. Um... I mean, it, it would take me a minute, but I think eventually I would find it. But no, um, it, it's tiny. And um, and at first I was confused why it was the same logo twice. So um, again, you know, getting in there and simplifying it and really taking a step back and having pretending you're the listener and, and getting in there, opening it and going, OK, what would be my first thought if I didn't work here, if I wasn't inside baseball here? What would, you know, and so I, I was, I was a little confused at first, like, what am I doing? So no, it's, it's tiny. So, and, um, yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> sorry, but, can we go back really quick? Gary had a really good point. I know when we talked earlier, instead of having it say play too, um, it, it could say, listen, listen now. Sorry about that. Um, like here. Yeah. Um, that play button. Yeah. Underneath there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, um, Gary, speaking of that, why don't you talk to, this is the player. So what do you think about this as far as, you know, having your audience engaged this way? Well, on this on this one, at least I can read the, the uh, logo uh, and, and see the uh, the name of the station. And I could, I, I'm having, a, I had a real hard time figuring out you're with family, uh, especially on, on the other one. Uh, but it's in script and, you know, using script is always dangerous like that. Um, you know, on on, the, on this page here, um, uh, it, it, it looks awfully busy with two logos for the radio station, and there's that mention on top for D E L Motors. It's it's really really busy, and and not once does it say listen now or listen live or um, whatever. And I, I I guess maybe you could argue that everybody knows what that little that little button is over there, but you know, I I always like to figure that my listener doesn't know, and I want to make it easy for them. Right. No, exactly. Yeah, Randy, you yeah. It's about the the way that the logo is displayed. Yeah. Again, you know, we have to. The reality is that we are in competition with the with the Spotify's and the Pandora's. And you when you're building an app like this, you have to think about what that what's going to be displayed. And in here, right here, what I see and I know everybody sees you have three copy and pasted JPEGs. and all you need to do is get a transparent PNG of your logo and of that sponsor logo up there so that they blend in, you know, with the app itself. Um, so, you know, you just, you've got to be thinking about those things when you're building apps like this. You've got to have a transparent logo that fits um, natively into your design. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could actually even put a song voting in here as well, yeah. like like if they decided to do something like that or either make that player button bigger 
um, you know, where that larger logo is displayed, that's what's displayed when album art is not being pulled into the app. Um, but, you know, when it is pulled, when the album art is pulled into the app, it does display in that space right there. I don't know why anybody wouldn't be using the voting, the thumbs up, thumbs down, just for even some side music testing. I know, you know, a lot of people are doing their music testing, but just to have some organic, you know, organic testing in their app, I think is a great idea. I would put it on all of the apps. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea, especially to get that data from your listeners and know what they like and don't like. Absolutely. Um, so this is a podcast page, a little bit different from what we looked at last time. Yes, icons, um, and and the way that this is displayed obviously is more engaging. Um, but what kind of changes could we make on this page, right? Well, first thing I would. I don't like is the I don't like this. I understand the importance of support us. So if somebody from this from KJIL is listening, I understand. I get it, but I don't think it belongs here on this page. Uh, I mean, if anything, it should say you know KJIL podcasts. Uh, you know, up up on the top there, um, not support us. It's like support us, and then episode two eleven, episode two ten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know a little bit. Kind of upside downy. Okay, and and um, Randy, why don't you speak to the social media? Yeah, you know, again, nobody loves to read anymore, so I don't think we need everybody that has a phone knows what these icons are. I don't think you need the Facebook, you know, written out, Twitter written out. You just could have the icons. In fact, I would make them really big because, again, to Gary's point a while ago, there's so much empty space here. I would just put the Facebook icon really big clickable leads out to your page same with the twitter uh the website and the instagram so that's i think that's all you need there a and again with the podcast i would go back to large artwork we need we we should have them streamlined mm. with the way that podcasts look in the the um on the platforms that you get your podcasts typically so that people are used to it and understand it and and it just it it just looks aesthetically better so Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, totally agree with that one. And I think they could actually fill that space around where that, you know, the logo is or um, where that placement is for the pictures that go with the podcast. They could kind of extend that and make that a little bit bigger. But, you know, we're all talking about listener experience. So let's go to our fourth app, Dakota Radio Group. And uh, let's get some thoughts on this one. So lots of advertisements. Uh, would, can you find the player, Gary? <laughs> I don't know. This one's giving me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> this one's giving me a headache. This is, um, yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I'm not sure what I would do with this one. The uh, all those ads on the left would make me crazy. They no, really I would. And, and I, and, you know, I'm I'm not sure what all these stations are. What is KGFX? Do I want to listen? Is that how they identify the station on the air, or do they have a name for it? Maybe I don't know. It's um, this this one here to me is 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 really uh, cluttered. Uh, uh, yeah, Randy, you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, so so there are one, two, three, four, five ads on this homepage here. Now, um, what I, I went into the app, the two two of them are programmatic on the exchange, and the other ones are being implemented by the station. I would make a choice. I would choose either or. So, you know, I know we're generating revenue, but which which way are we going to do it on the app? Is it going to be the the local? owned and operated revenue, or are we going to do the exchange? So I would make the decision there. I would also, I love that this has a rotator, but I would I would not use it for ads because you already have the ad placement either or, right? I would be using that for station incentives, contest events, promotions, and leading them back to my website to drive traffic or this or on air, you know, for ratings or get them out to my event. I would be using that rotator for station-centric information. Right. And, 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 you know, I just saw something else uh, that, that I hadn't seen before. And, and we've, you know, we've looked at this app a lot. 
yeah. is you have to you have to on the on the left on the right side you have to select the station you want to listen to on the bottom. I just saw that for the first time. So this app, you open it, then you have to select the station, and then there's it's it it says the song playing misunderstanding by Genesis, and there's an arrow there. Does that mean you can skip the song? Does that mean uh, what's what's does that mean it starts to play it? I mean, this is like like the old temptation song, a ball of confusion. You know, it really is this app. I mean, I think that they could really take advantage of the space on the app, monetize it for possibly like owned and operated, like you said, Randy, um, not make it as busy, Gary, like you're talking about, maybe promote, you know, their, the stations more, have that more present um, as far as, you know, how the experience is when you open up the app. Because when you, you know, when you go to, you know, another page, it gives you different, you know, different experiences but what do you think about having all of the buttons on the bottom what do you think that about that for being accessible I don't know this app is so cluttered it's I think it just it just it's there's too many choices it's it's you know this is more this is more confusing than me trying to get my video onto this call today I mean <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you know you mentioned those buttons that you clicked into, so that each station, this is called a multi-tenant app. So some companies, some radio companies, will bring their stations from one market into one app, as opposed to doing single apps. So this is an example of a multi-tenant app where the other apps were just single tenant. Um, but yeah. when you click into the radio station. Um, Randy, what do you think about this page as, a, as an experience for the listener to see what's playing on the air? Yeah, a lot more simple than that homepage. Um, so it, easier to navigate. Um, it, it's it's Everything's very clear and I understand it. And, and actually a piece of advice, if you do need to run all those ads, why not throw one into this playlist so that it's more organic as they're scrolling what has been played, they're served one of your ads so that you can pull something off that homepage, stick it in there, um, and, and you're still getting the, the activity that you need. But I do like this. Again, I love the voting because it is interactive. I think what I keep saying, you know, you could throw also something in here about um, a station contest promotion event, something you want them to do. I would take advantage of that. If you've got, You've got your audience right here in your hand. Give them something to do um, that, again, is low barrier of entry, isn't hard to do, but you but you have their attention. So, um, but I do, I think it's much simpler than, than the homepage. No, absolutely. You know, you mentioned contesting, um, even utilizing push notifications on the app for maybe it's contesting, but you can use it for all different kinds of promotions, um, as well as if you have, you know, different kind of artists or events or things that happen at the station that you want to promote, you can always use those push notifications. So know that's, that that's available. That's actually a really good point, Sari. You know, with all of these apps that we've talked about, we're heading into the colder, unpredictable weather. That is a perfect way to get people to your apps too. Give them the notifications on closures, school delays, things like that on your on your app. And that's where they can find them. So again, leading them around and getting the incentivizing them to to come to your app is is are the things that we need to be thinking about when we're looking at these yeah and, and yeah, yeah you know just you know go ahead Gary I'm sorry uh, uh, one more thing I would have on that if we could just go back to that the prior page for a quick sec um, yeah is I, I would have the, the KGFX I'd have their frequency next to it um, because you know, a lot of people today, you know, they, you know, research continually shows that people are not as aware of call letters as they are dial positions. Uh, in, uh, I'm going to guess KGFX if it's, I'm not sure what market that's in, but if it's in a, if it's in a Nielsen market, it's a diary market, and I can promise you that close to 90% of the diary respondents in that market are going to record listening by exact frequency. So I'd have KGFX 92.7 next to it, or 103.5, whatever. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, very important for your station. And you're right. I don't know if a lot of people do know call letters like like that. They really know that frequency on the dial. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you talk to people, you know, they tell you, oh, I listen to 93.5, I listen to 102.7, 103.6, and I, six, I mean, seven, and I really love 107.9. That's my favorite. That's how they, they talk about it. Yeah, no, you're totally right. And the way, you know, we talked about, you know, driving that listener is with content. Um, but what is that content? Is that local content? Is that global content? How could they change these kinds of pages to be really more geared to your local listener? Randy, do you want to maybe take this yeah. one? And I think that's another reality check. I mean, you know, if you want if if you want the the global news, you've got a place you're getting it. But when I want my local community news, I'm this is where I'm going to come. I'm going to come to somebody that's in in my community. And so I would these I think these look like their um, like their network um, news and and sports. But I would be I would be putting my local articles and information on my app again another reason to drive people to that app to get that information from there um and and like we just talked about you know the the weather closures and the and and the school closures and things like that i would be putting those but i would try to localize my app as much as possible gary what do you think about that as far as being a local radio station and utilizing the mobile app yeah i mean if you're a local you know you should be local, you know. Uh, you know, local is better than regional and national. And you know, again, I don't know how many people are gonna, in reality, go to a radio station app for news. Um, not, not in the, not in the world we live in today, you know. Okay. <laughs> so I, I say, you know, if, you know, if it were my radio station, I, I wouldn't have any of this stuff on it. I, I, it would be simple. Gotcha. So what you're saying is basically like you need something that's more simplified for the listener to be attracted to. Yeah, because it's it's hard enough. Think about this. It's hard enough to get them to understand that, yes, you can listen to a local radio station on your phone. OK, number that's job one. Job two, you know, then you have to explain to them, go to your app store and you have to download it. And then once you download it, you know, you got to open it and, you know, it's hopefully it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, I think that's a difficult process for the average person. Um, and I could see them giving up on it really, you know, early on just saying, ah, forget about it. This isn't worth it. Gotcha. Well, cool. Um, well, those are great thoughts. Um, we appreciate your opinions on everything that you've given us today um, because it really is important to have that listener engagement, to be able to talk to your listener. Our apps have talk to us buttons on it that you can connect with the radio station. So I think it's important to give that incentive to download the app. Maybe it's a prize or maybe it's a, you know some kind of contesting that you do with that, um, but it really does engage your listener in another aspect other than just listening to the traditional radio signal. Um, so in closing thoughts, um, Randy, what, what do you have to add to this? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think, you know, just overall, we need to get out of our own heads and, and we find ourselves just step out of the studio, step out of, I know you're in those meetings where you're being asked, what are the numbers? How are we grow these at? Step out of those meetings and just take the audience journey on that app. And I don't know how appropriate this is, but a mentor a long time ago told me, you know, it's like dating. So to Gary's point, if I'm trying to get you to go to my app, I first I just want to show you how attractive and funny I am. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dump all my baggage on you, right? So so just at first, it's, it's got to be low barrier entry and it's got to be easy, fun and entertaining. So just make it simple. Take all of, take everything else out of it. Make it simple and fun. Get them there first. Once you've had a couple dates, you can slowly start releasing, you know, asking them for more information like we talked about with that registration form. You can't ask for everything up front. You're not going to drill someone on a first date. What's your name? Thank you so much. A couple days later, can I get your phone number? Things like that. So you've got to think about it that way. But just simplify. Simplify is the best way I can think of it. Take everything else off. Test it. Try it. Try it for you know a few months. Just have the player on there. Maybe your socials. That's it. 
and, and see how it goes. Um, and, and again, incentivizing because we have to remember, I know you're in these, I've been in these meetings. How are our app numbers? How are our website numbers? What are the station numbers? You've got to have all these boats rising. So remember that journey. You can lead them to the app where there's a code or a special word that you need for the on-air contest or you need to enter on the website. So again, you can make that journey simple and fun. You just have to remember who you're talking to. It's not you and it's not your team members. It is that person that you want to listen that doesn't have all the inside knowledge. So simplicity. Thank you. That's awesome. That's great. Um, Gary, you have any closing thoughts? God, Randy, you just hit that out of the park. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on all of that there. You know, I, I, you know, the only thing I have to add to that would be that uh, I think radio programmers should not take it, not think that everybody gets the whole app process about down about you know you know i what i hear when i listen to radio all over the country is i hear all of the um what do they call it? in politics they call it uh, talking points well the, i i hear the talking points you know download the app you know and i hear you know cho, 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 lasers and all that stuff and uh, you know go to your app store you know and and i just hear all these like talking points but i don't hear anybody saying you know you can listen to us if you're listening in the car, you can also listen on your phone and here's how you do it. You know, nobody is saying that. Um, so keep, yeah, I'll, I'll, Randy, I'm just gonna tag on to what you said and say, let's, we have to educate our listeners. That's why HD radio failed and continues to fail because radio never educated um, uh, the, the people about what HD radio is. Most consumers think HD radio just sounds better. They have no clue that it's radio stations within radio within radio stations, um, and that you know the, the era of HD is. I think I think that train's left the left the the station. So let's not do that with these apps. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much, both of you, Randy and Gary, for joining me today. Um, I think this was really insightful. Um, you know, this is a part of your digital footprint as far as having a mobile app um, that goes along with your website and everything else that connects to your listener. So really think about engaging your listener, having that content that they come back to, and reaching that audience that you want to reach that maybe isn't in a car anymore that might be listening to an Alexa skill or might be listening on your mobile app. So we really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Um, of course, you are welcome to email me, Sari at SoCastDigital.com. And uh, we look forward to joining you again for another webinar. So thank you very much and have a great day from SoCast. <laughs>